internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad here with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got another guest on the line today, and we're going to find out who she is and what she does, and her name is Dorothy Kuhn. Are you there? I am here, Brad. How are you doing this morning? Wonderful and a half, and then some to the 10th power infinity. How are you? Uh, about the same, only Yay. times infinity again. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you? Are you down in Dallas or... Yes, I'm I'm in the DFW Metroplex. I'm actually in Denton at the north end of the Metroplex. It's a two university town, really a cool place. Yeah, you're just down the road from 35W. Yes. We've got one. 35W right here. is that way. <laughs> okay, for us it's I don't even know. <laughs> it's uh -huh. south where it's warmer. It's not even cold here in Minnesota yet. I know, uh, you know, my kids come up to me from time to time and they'll, they'll like plant their foreheads on my shoulder and say, there is no global warming, mom. There is no global warming. <laughs> <laughs> Bless their hearts. Well, on a different topic, we can talk about global warming sometimes. It's uh, one of those things, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, about it's, it? it's an important, I've, I have this big background in science, so it's, it's a fun topic. <laughs> it's so, something we can do something about. Absolutely. They're trying to right now. Yes. So let's get to know who you are. I do these interviews kind of quick and condense them so we don't take people's valuable time because time is a commodity and uh, we've only got 24 hours in the day. So first off, who are you? You said you got kids. You got pets? I do. I've got two grown kids and I'm so proud of them. They are the apples of my eye. They're out of school. They've got their educations and uh, in their professions and doing well. My son just got married earlier this year. Aha, so well brought up. You did a good job, right? Uh, you know, I'm really proud. So uh, as as flawed as we are as humans, our kids can turn out pretty good in spite of us. Well, they say there's no like uh, owner's manual for children, so you got to learn from scratch all the time. It's true. And guess what? They'll get to do the same thing. Yes. So, you know, we all grow up in some uh, somewhere on the, dis, on, on the spectrum of dysfunctional American families here in this country. And, you know, ours was kind of somewhere in the middle. So it, it's all good. And the gift of that is to really learn how to become a better person uh, as you become an adult. Yeah, I think uh, in general, you just have to have a lot of patience because everybody's different and has their own, you know, being a magician for many, many years, the whole concept of perspective of how one person sees it and how another person sees it, you know, from my point of view as a performer, it's obvious how the magic trick is working from another right. person looks like a miracle. Yes. So yes. definitely per always perception. Definitely. So yes. tell us what you do for a living. Uh, so I, I help people become really inspiring leaders. And to inspire is to inspire not just thought and feeling, but action. And that's the kind of thing that, uh, that so many people who, when they want to step up into their business, uh, into their community, even into the political sphere, which is kind of our topic uh, for today. Uh, what to do after this crazy election? Half the country is thrilled with it and half the country is mortified. And so this is to really speak. We're to. still divided, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so how to, how to be gentle and kind with one another and be effective and have your voice heard. Uh, so I help people go from invisible to invincible. So you're take on leadership is like some people go to these motivational seminars, spend $3,000 on much of CDs, and then they go home and then they don't do anything with it. Uh, well, not doing anything will get to exactly those results. Yeah. You got to keep the ball rolling, so to speak. Yes. Exactly. Well, cool. So um, when you do your work, do you do your work there in your office or you do it at use the internet like a lot of people do, or do you go to clients locations or how do you where do you do your how do you do it so so there are there are a variety of ways to deliver and i do one-on-one uh, -on -one virtual uh training we do it often over the phone uh because you know here here in the dallas fort worth metroplex traffic is a bear nobody wants to get on the road any more than they have to 
so so that works very uh, well for people. And they, you know, I can record those phone calls, and they people love that stuff on the replay. It makes the learning deeper for for them. Uh, so there are a lot of advantages to that. But you know, uh, I do uh, in person events. I'm have have my first one planned for the fourth quarter of next year. You're producing and, it. Hmm. You're actually producing the event? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, cool. Very cool. I'll, I'll have other people helping me, but uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have a leadership event. Uh, and and then I have VIP clients, you know, who do a half day with me, those, those kinds of things. So it depends, you know, on what the person needs. Well, that's the cool thing about the Internet. Like you said, recording something like this, you can record a live, I mean, with all this stuff with Facebook Live and everything, record an actual live webinar. Yes. And people can get it that way and then later it's recorded so they can get it later on their own schedule and exactly. the evergreenness to it it's out there for a long long time so and then yes, doing the live yes you can monetize it and turn it into a whole set of of other things so people can get a taste of you at a lower price point and uh, and it helps to fray some of your expenses along the way so with leadership are you like the female john maxwell is that what's going on so, you know, the thing that is important to me that I had I had to learn. So I grew up this like mystical Catholic kid and then I became fascinated with science because I was so curious about how God made the world. And so I became this really, really geeky kid. I when I got my first professional job after university, I got it. I studied physics and math. I got that job because I knew more quantum mechanics than anybody else. Geek. Got it. And when I, I went to work in engineering firms um, and, you know, I couldn't compete with the hot coders and the hot uh, electrical and mechanical designers because that, that wasn't what I'd studied. So, oh, darn it, I had to go into management. So of the, of the, uh, the five pillars that um, we use in the Synergy Cafe, which is career, finance, mm -hmm. relationships, spirituality and wellness, how do you see what you do fitting into those categories? Is there one that's, that, there, that resonates higher than another, or do they all kind of harmonize together? Or that I'm a holistic thinker, so they, they harmonize. The things that are important from a leadership perspective is, is to embody leadership. That's as a geek when I lived in my head completely, I, I couldn't do that. You know, I would see other people who had this, you know, before they even opened their mouths. Uh, people were already attending to them. They were watching them. They were fascinated by them. They wanted to hear what they were going to say. And I thought, how do you do that? And so I, I just went on a quest to find out how it is. And, and uh, the fundamentals of leadership are really embodied leadership and, and how to uh, be fully in your body and fully present and yet have really good boundaries. Uh, and, you know, I, in the family that I grew up in, I didn't have any models for that. So those are just things I had to learn as an adult. And I'm just so passionate about helping other people really step into the the grace and power and love of others uh, that, that is just waiting around the corner for them. Well, that's interesting you bring up that word, that word power because sometimes it can be abused. So I think a person's intention, if they're going to be a leader, their intention has to be right. Yes. Otherwise they're leading their sheep off a cliff kind of thing, which uh, uh -huh. nobody wants to do that. But sometimes people don't know any better. I mean, I've been in those situations where I'm thinking that that person is the person to follow and you follow them and whoops, I didn't want to go here. How did I get here? Uh, right, right, right. Indeed. Which, uh, which is uh, where all of those uh, geeky skills of observing, you know, making the best decision you can, and then kind of checking in along the way. Are things going the way I want? Is this taking me in the right direction? And just being honest with yourself and often having an accountability partner of some kind who can help you see from their arm's length perspective what you can't see for yourself. I bring that up. I just, uh, last interview, I think we brought that up. It's very, very, um, what a word am I looking for? But people don't know what they don't know. They're, yes. They're, you can be looking in the mirror and you don't see it because, I'm um, again, this is kind of like the magic thing too. Some people yes. just don't see what is going on behind the curtain. They, and they don't. And, and the moral perspectives that, that we have, the, the beliefs uh, and, and attitudes that we have, uh, live in a frame 
of of a moral perspective uh, that uh, really lets us see the things that we do see, and it stops us. Those other things in the world, and there are a lot of other things out there, they you know hit hit the wall of our perspective, and our beliefs, our our moral and ethical constructs. They're deep, deep structures that that we hold, and if it doesn't match with what we already know, it never makes it in. So do you do that when you work with a client to find out exactly what their intention is and make sure yes. that they're sure that's what they're where they want to go because yes. you know, what you wish for you will get. So Yes, yes. And what you focus on you'll get uh, yeah. more more of. So uh, when I have, for example, uh, when I have a VIP client, oh hold on, I better plug in the uh, power now. Uh oh. Sorry. Um <laughs> there's that power again. <laughs> <laughs> power. <laughs> And, and, you know, for, for me, power is not power over other people. Power is power over oneself, to, to see oneself, to know when you're fully aligned, to know when you're on point, on purpose, to know when you're leading with love as opposed to leading with ego, to course correct, uh, when you mess up, clean it up, th you know, those, those kinds of things, so that you can truly be both inspiring and in service to people, and that is the sweet spot. Well, again, I don't like to do these too long, but before we get uh, go to the end here, could you share how to get a hold of you? You had a, a web domain, so we know how to find you. Is there anything, or tell a little, a little about your event coming up, things of that sort? Uh, yes, yes. So, uh, so there are two ways to get a hold of me. Uh, you know, uh, do, do you want to talk a, a little bit on on this topic of what to do after you know this crazy election? Yes, we will do that. Okay. Why don't you just okay, do we'll this do that. First. Are we going to do that now or on a on a separate time? Um, let's, let's, uh, give me your domain name and okay, then, I, okay. then we'll get into that. Okay. So, yeah. so the first way is just my web domain, dorothycoon.com. That's D-O-R-O-T-H-Y-K-U-H-N, like that football guy, dot com. Got it. Okay. And then the, before we ask the, get into this big conversation, we, we might want to do another one on this. We'll see how it goes because okay. uh, we'll go into like about 15 minutes, but I was wondering if you can answer the question, the big why question, why are you doing this and why aren't you a computer programmer or a yoga instructor or why aren't you like a ski instructor or a bus driver? Why did you choose this for a career? Why did I choose this career? You know, I chose it because it was such a problem for me to solve uh, when I was in my, in my 30s. And, uh, and when you run into a big problem in life, uh, and, you know, it took me a long time, step by step, to be able to solve this problem, to be able to step into a place where I could really uh, serve people with the kind of power and grace that that just inspires people, that makes them want to step into their best selves. Them, is it their or themselves? themselves oh, I'm not an English self, kid. <laughs> Those there, guys. Those there guys. Anyway, that that really you know brings out the best in them. And you know, I've managed uh, in technology. I would manage teams of people that were you know here in the U.S. We had teams overseas, and and really the the way to get the best out of any team that, that you're leading is to understand them, to be able to listen to them carefully, uh, to be able to point them, you know, in a direction where they're all just like excited to go to. That's that inspiration part that makes all the difference for a team that is slogging along okay. or a team that is like itching to fly. Got it. So a lot of this is for helping people. And I, that's, again, nice to know because that's what most people say when I ask the big why question. They want to help other people. So let's touch a little bit on this topic that you're talking about. But I think sure. I want to do another one on it. And we'll use this as a little teaser for them to find that other video. How's okay. That? Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so what is well, this other topic that you want to talk about? You know, what to do after this crazy election. This is for the people who are in uh, hair on fire mode after this uh, uh, election. And what most most people uh, in the middle and left of the, the country aren't necessarily quite aware of, it's a perspective thing, uh, is how it is that um, that the moral models that that we carry, their deep internal structures, really rule how it is that we see the, the world. This 2016 presidential race was a triumph of one moral model over 
you know, what many people in the middle and the left of the country saw as a huge amount of substance. And and that um, moral model that, that dominated uh, in the end was carried on the wings of well-crafted marketing and branding. And while progressives and Democrats may not yet know it, the substance and the moral model that they already hold dear, plus some inspiring marketing and messaging and branding is key to winning back not just the presidency, but the House, the Senate, governorships and state houses across the land. Okay, let's talk about that on another video. We'll close this one out and let's do another one right now. I'll just close this one out. So... This will be this will be exciting, <laughs> be fun cool. and, and timely. So I appreciate you taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe and with the Synergy Collaborative. This is Magic Brad signing off. Thank you very much, Dorothy. Thank you.